discover China. They are some of the most recognizable and vivid elements in traditional Chinese painting. Countless poets and painters were inspired by them. Standing amidst the cloudy peaks, nature's beauty is awe-inspiring. Discover China takes you from the foot of the hill to the highest misted crest of a mountain in Chinese paintings. It is written in the Book of Changes that society should care about its people as it guides them to obey social norms. The word culture brings to mind a plethora of vivid images. Poets and officials tried bringing peace and prosperity to their country while confronted by difficulties in their personal lives. Throughout their lives, they felt the contradictions between living in society and living out of society. Regardless, they kept purity in their minds. Preferring to stay far away from the affairs in the imperial court, Chinese scholars endeavored to understand the meaning of life by returning to nature. Their former ambitions now turned into sorrow and have since faded away in China's ancient terraces and pavilions. Though living in busy, bustling cities, these scholars were constantly looking to the woodlands and hills. In the morning mist, they played gracious and captivating songs on ancient instruments. In their music, the mountains and waters seem to take on shapes, essence, and feelings. In 1616, Xu Xia Ke, an aged poet but unsuccessful official, walked up a path on a mountain. He had trudged the path for two laborious days. When he reached the top, Xu was exhausted and blinded by the heavy fog. He 
fell into a deep state of trance. By the time he awakened, the mountain winds blowing on his face had driven away the mist from the mountain, unveiling the sun. Before his eyes unfurled a magnificent view. stood Hong Mountain, known in the West as the Yellow Mountains. Its sheer beauty and breathtaking scenery truly stunned Shu. The bewildered poet seemingly stumbled upon this picture-perfect landscape. Since then, Chinese people who dearly love mountains, lakes, and rivers have taken an interest in this mountain. This spectacular scenery has since been recorded in many vivid, rich, and vibrant Chinese paintings. rich with images of the sun and moon, China has never lacked poetic sentiments. The fantastic peaks and oddly shaped stones thrusting through the clouds and mist have left a tremendous impact on many scholars and artisans. While appreciating nature's wonders, the scholars would often express their feelings and aspirations as well. The flying stone, sitting far above the earth, seems to tower towards the sky, standing at the edge of a cliff, looking down upon the other mountains. The turtle stone, though seemingly in disarray, is a unique rock formation resembling a sea turtle riding on the back of a giant fish. twisting like a dragon, cascade from above and fall into a deep pond. The water has a jade green hue and the pond is crystal clear. Seen from afar, it looks like a sparkling emerald embedded into the rock. Pines have strong trunks, short, thick green leaves, and ever-changing branches. The uneven terrain prevents these pines from growing upright. Over the years, they grew crooked, and some even grow downwards. The life of the Huang Mountain Pine is as unusual as it appears. Despite harsh living conditions, with even the slimmest chances of survival, the mountain pines take root, spread, and grow. In order to absorb nutrients from the rocky terrain, the Huang mountain pine grows roots deep into the crevices of the rocks. Their strong roots are even capable of cracking the rocks to reach nutritious soil. The roots can grow several dozen times longer than the tree itself, ensuring its survival in this inhospitable environment. The shape and growth of the Huang Mountain Pine may explain why Chinese intellectuals are fascinated by them. 
These pines did not only symbolize tenacious vitality, but the embodiment of integrity and the power to defend dignity. For many Chinese intellectuals who paid particular attention to integrity, describing a pine was the best way to express their feelings and innermost thoughts. After the Ming Dynasty, when Xu Xiaoke found Huang Mountain, many more intellectuals followed. Many famous scholars and intellectuals sought to gain comfort, peace, and self-expression while leaving behind their troubled past. All the while, they were communicating with the mountain and rivers. In later days, Huang Mountain became the stomping grounds for a number of well-known calligraphers and painters. During the early Qing Dynasty, Yan Jiang, a famous Chinese painter, discovered Huang Mountain. To him, the mountain was not only a friend whom he regretted not meeting sooner, but a turning point in his painting style. With masterful strokes of his brush, Jian depicted Huang Mountain scenery. His paintings recorded his conversations with his new friend. The Bare Mountain Peaks the strange, broken rocks and twisted, stubborn pines represented Jian's inner world following his country's defeat and the home he had lost. Jian painted the unusual landscape in a revolutionary way, revealing the image in his heart in one of his famous pieces, The Broken Country and the Twisted Pine. trees serving as the mountain's soul and the peaks serving as its bones, Jan's paintings expressed the indelible sorrow and pain in his heart. Jan is one of the first Chinese artists in painting history to depict the special characteristics of Huang Mountain in such a deceptively simple way. of years. Huang Mountain's vitality and strength are well defined by its rocky exterior and twisted pine trees, all lending to create a dreamlike image. The Chinese freehand brushwork painting technique is one of the most refined forms of Chinese landscape painting. The casual strokes express the emotion the scenery holds, combined with human inspiration and nature's wonders. Unlike other styles of painting, Chinese landscape paintings heavily emphasize a unique artistic atmosphere. In the best traditions of Chinese culture, the best images and the finest sounds should take on no form and have no sound. Within this concept, Chinese artists pursue their artistic goals. The sea of clouds rolling against Huang Mountain's rocky face endows any painting with an exceptional ambiance. The delicate clouds swirl and coil, magically blending with the mountain's stern features.
Mountains are a constant source of enchantment thanks to their natural shapes. However, natural landscapes constantly change. Never confined or limited, Yellow Mountain is no different. It is famous for its varied shapes. A Chinese proverb says, lost in beautiful scenery, your spirit floats afar. It is considered to be the finest impression mountains and rivers leave behind. In front of Yellow Mountain, this proverb takes shape. It satisfies the creative goals of the Chinese people. The lively swarm of clouds and weathered ancient pines constitute this extremely beautiful scenery. Many who came here to see it personally felt compelled and motivated by it to express their feelings with brushes and ink. In the early spring of 1655 AD, a 14-year-old boy was seen on Huang Mountain. His name was Shi Tao, a Buddhist monk. Before his appearance on the mountain, Shi Tao's life of seclusion remained obscure. His painting, Searching the Mountains for a Single Gust of Wind, is his most famous depiction of Huang Mountain. He devoted his entire life to its dynamic scenery. With simple brush strokes, he portrayed the atmosphere and substance concealment and emergence of the Huang Mountain. Shi Tao also demonstrated the vitality of heaven and earth, as well as the spirit of the mountain. Shi Tao created a painting style unique to him, leaving several masterpieces behind for future generations. Shi Tao has been hailed as a master painter. His seemingly casual brushwork fully illustrates his artistic talent and dramatic penchant. The Yellow Mountain's innate majestic beauty and ever-changing intricate scenery fascinated Shi Tao, Jian Jiang, and numerous other artists. It was this mountain that enlightened and inspired them all. In their time, they learned from nature's creation and broke the mold of traditional Chinese landscape painting. Soon after, Chinese landscape paintings became more natural painted on large scrolls ink splashed and scattered on the canvas. The painters and artists of that period would never have imagined that due to their depictions of the mountain and its impressive surroundings, they would later be heralded as an artistic group known as the Huang Mountain School. artistic hub. Every painter is deeply immersed in its breathtaking scenery. Zhu Hai Ching, a renowned painter and calligrapher, has been to Huang Mountain many times. People have always found in the changing spirits of Huang Mountain the mental image of their souls. Huang 
在别的，比方北方、南方的山呢，都能得到各个的具体的体现，但在黄山的话呢，他们能得到综合的体现。所以黄山的话呢，其实是中国山水画的最好的诠释者。比方说那个山部顶部，我现在写成画的话，那个画的话呢，顶部比较高的地方的话呢，有些裸露的岩石的话呢，这比较适于用斧劈寸的表现方式方法。这种部，然后这个中部的话呢，因为它那个草木啊，就是那个植被，然后加上那个松树比较多，所以呢比较适合用披麻寸的方式方法。比方说这这这些部位。Playing the gu qin, composing poems and painting, they endow the mountains and rivers with feelings. This was the purpose the ancient Chinese scholars and artists pursued: harmonious artistic concepts of heaven, earth. In mankind. They have blended Huang Mountain's unique character perfectly into their landscape paintings, imbuing it with a magical air. It has been said that the Yellow Mountain's unique character adds subtle ambiance to traditional Chinese paintings. Some believe that it is the art that endowed this mountain with great cultural importance. People in China have always enjoyed decorating their halls with landscape paintings, sipping a cup of tea while admiring their beauty. The mountains and rivers, outlined by the artist brushes eons ago, still represent the Chinese people's state of mind. If you close your eyes, you might see a mountain in Chinese painting, instilled with an ancient spirit. <laughs>